Hello and welcome to Family Medicine Top Tips and Tutorials. I'm Dr. Madeleine Muller, a family physician here at CMH. And today we're going to focus on looking at who do we switch to TLD. And one of the challenges is that a lot of our patients has actually been through various guidelines over the last decade and has been on a variety of regimens. And you can't really understand how to use TLD if you don't understand some of that history. So we're going to have a little quick review of the last 10 years of art regimens. So the classic ones and the ones we know, and that was with us for more than a good decade, was to Nofavir, FTC, and Efavirenz, um, that pretty much uh, was a game changer in the world of HIV, a one tablet, um, very well tolerated. Um, and then for patients who couldn't tolerate Efavirenz, usually our mental health patients who were actively psychotic, we would use either nevirapine or lupinavir ritonavir. So you can see that can you can use lupinavir ritonavir in a first-line regimen. And then, of course, our children um, and those patients with renal dysfunction got a back of a 3TC Efavirenz. Um, and in those days, it was, you know, the efavirenz and avirapine regimens, it was very, very easy to develop resistance. Literally within three months, if the viral loads were still high, we would make an assumption that um, the patient will be resistant to all the drugs in that regimen. And they would be switched to the old classic second line regimen was this AZT, 3TC and lupinavir, ritonavir. So you can see that tenofovir was switched to AZT um, the efavirenz was switched to lupinavir, ritonavir. And interestingly enough, we keep that 3TC because the mutation that makes the virus resistant to 3TC also cripples the virus and actually makes it easier to kill. So you will notice we always have 3TC in the regimens, even if they might be resistant um, to that particular drug. If you weren't able to tolerate lupinavir ritonavir, maybe you had some diarrhea, maybe problems with cholesterol, then we would switch that to atazanavir ritonavir, and those two were pretty much interchangeable. Now, what was great with the old second line regimen is that it was very difficult to get resistance to it. So it will take years and years of taking it badly before you would develop resistance. But it was also a regimen that was quite easy to take badly because it was twice a day tablets. And the slipinavir atonavir were these huge, massive things, two of those twice a day that you would have to take. Um, and they would quite often have side effects. And so people quite often would skip them on weekends if they were traveling, for example. Um, and so we would have patients who over long periods of time would not suppress. So if after two years you were still not suppressing on your AZT, 3TC, lupinavir, ritonavir, um, then we would actually do a genotype. And if we saw there was resistance to either lupinavir, ritonavir or atazanavir, ritonavir, those patients would qualify for third-line treatment. Now, it's, it's good to just point out at this point that most of these patients, when we would test them with the genotypes, were not resistant yet. It's amazing how difficult it was to get resistant to these regimens. And importantly, even if you had resistance to AZT, and we already said you would have resistance to 3TC, this regimen would still work as long as the lupinavir ritonavir or the atazanavir ritonavir was intact. So that's important to remember. Our third line regimens would then vary and the third line committee would tell us what we would need to use, but it would almost always include either darunavir ritonavir or dolitegravir or a combination um, of the two. When we eventually got dolitegravir, then obviously TLD became our main first line regimen. Um, and then we had the sort of recent second line, which was that AZT 3TC dolitegravir. A um, little bit easier because we've got rid of that lupinavir ritonavir, but the AZT was still this twice a daily regimen that patients had to take. Um, and then a lot of patients might develop anemia on the AZT, and so some of them would end up then on tenofovir 3TC dolitegravir as a second line regimen. Um, and then also we have the possibility of using a back of a 3TC dolitegravir as a second line regimen. So these two became interesting after the Nadia trial. There's actually a variety of trials that looked at this. Um, but the key message from that trial was that TLD as a second line treatment after failing on TEE was superior to this classic AZT 3TC dolitegravir regimen um, as a second line regimen. And the main reason for this was not so much suppression, both worked equally well, but there was less dolitegravir resistance in the group that was on TLD as a second line regimen. Um, and so suddenly we were re-looking at all these regimens patients were on and were going, hold on, TLD is easier to take, not very many side effects, a very robust drug, difficult to get resistance to, um, which of our patients now qualify to actually be put onto TLD.
So if we look at all these old first-line regimens that we've had, all of these patients now qualify to go on to either TLD1, if they're more than um, 10 years old and more than 30 kilograms, and as long as their EGFR is over 50. If the EGFR is not over 50 or if they're under 30 kilograms or under 10 years of age, then we can use our Abacava. And just notice we've, we've added these little numbers to be able to differentiate of whether we're using it as a first line or as a second line regimen. So if somebody was existingly on the first line, not failing on that regimen, then they would be switched to TLD1 or ALD1. For patients who were on the old second line, so the AZT3TC Plupinavir Ritonavir and the AZT3TC Dolitegravir, we will therefore, if we switch those patients, they will be on TLD2. Now, for most patients, you will notice it's going to qualify for TLD2. And there's only one very small subgroup that makes us worried. And the group that makes us worried is people who are resistant to lipinavirotonavir or atazanavirotonavir. Because we're going to need our PIs as our third-line treatment eventually. So if they fail on this on their dolitegravir-based regimen, we want to make sure that we still have those PIs available. So you'll see this is what sort of informs how we make decisions about TLD2. So very easy. If the patient is on AZT3TC lupinavir ritonavir or atazanavir ritonavir, they've had treatment for less than two years, then we're not worried about resistance. Remember, difficult to get resistance. Switch to TLD2. If the patient's on AZT3TC dolitegravir, doesn't matter what their viral load is. Remember, the Nadia trial showed us that TLD2 is a superior regimen. Switch to TLD2. If you have a patient that can't have to nofavir, usually because of renal issues with a GFR of under 50, we're going to use ALD2. We don't have as solid evidence for ALD2 as we do for TLD2, but having a once a daily tablet massively outweighs um, the sort of the possible risk of using that regimen. And so we therefore have decided to try and get rid of this old twice daily AZT regimens. If we have our second line regimens um, that we're going to be a little bit more worried about, is those patients who have been on atazanavir ritonavir or lupinavir ritonavir for longer than two years. So again, if they've been on it for longer than two years, viral load is LDL, switch to TLD2. If they've been on it for longer than two years and you get a viral load that's between 50 and 1,000, just repeat it three months later. If it's still under 1,000, switch to TLD2 or ALD2 as appropriate. Easy. So as you can see, almost all of these patients, most of our patients are going to be qualifying for, um, for TLD2. So when do we get worried? So this is the group of patients where we have to look a little bit deeper. Patient who's on a lupinavirotonavir or atazanavirotonavir regimen as a second line. They've been on treatment for longer than two years. They've got two viral loads that's over a thousand even after those two years on treatment. And now what's going to make a decision on whether we're going to switch them or not will depend on their adherence. So if they have poor adherence, and that's usually we notice they're not always picking up on time, um, or we're noticing that they're not picking up their pharmacy treatment on time, not coming to their appointments on the correct dates, then that's probably the adherence that's going to cause them to have that increased viral load. We're not going to do a resistance test in these patients. We're going to rather address the adherence, and the easiest way to address the adherence would actually be to just switch them to that TLD2. So those we're all going to switch. If the adherence is more than 80%, now we are concerned because now we've got a patient who's taken this regimen for a very long time. They're not suppressed. They're taking their treatment. Why is that viral load not, um, not LDL? And therefore, now we will discuss with an expert for a resistance test. And when we do the resistance test, depending on what's happening with that lupinavir ritonavir, the third line committee will decide, can we get away with a TLD? or are we actually going to have to add in Darunavir into that regimen? So in summary, very easily, almost everyone qualifies for TLD, either one or two, depending on whether they have failed a regimen in the past or not, except if they're on a PI-based regimen, so lupinavir ritonavir for more than two years, two viral loads more than 1,000, and that adherence is more than 80%. Thank you.